In Algebra 1, we've been learning about literal equations. Let's start with the definition. A literal equation is an equation with two or more variables. So now we're going away from doing things with just numbers to just variables, or lots of variables. In order to solve these, there are some steps we want to follow. Step number one is to locate the variable goal. So figure out what variable you're trying to solve for. Step two is to identify the operations and the order. Identify the operations and the order. And step three, use inverses to isolate the variable. Let's look at what that looks like in practice. Some examples. Number one. Okay, the distance formula is D equals RT, where D stands for distance, R stands for rate, and T stands for time. So R times T is rate times time. We want to solve for R, or for the rate. To do that, we're going to rewrite our equation, D equals RT. We're going to locate our variable goal, which is R. We found that. We're going to identify the operations in order. It's being multiplied by t. That would be the operations, and that's the only thing happening, so it's happening first. And we're going to use the inverses to isolate. So it's being multiplied by t. The opposite of multiply or the inverse of multiply would be divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by t. And my answer is r equals d divided by t. And that's it. There are no like terms. There's nothing to combine. There's nothing to cancel. So that's our final answer. Let's put some application to that. For example, Ernest won a 26.2 mile race in 1.3 hours. What was his average rate of speed? The reason we want to find, well, we want to find his average rate of speed, that's why we would solve here, so we could get r equals, and then we're going to plug in our distance, which is 26.2. We're going to plug in our time, which is 1.3, and 26.2 divided by 1.3 is 20.1 miles per hour. Obviously, Ernest was not running. He was probably riding a bike, for example. Let's do, look at another one. Number two, the formula. For a Fahrenheit temperature the formula for a Fahrenheit temperature in terms of degrees Celsius is F equals I'm sorry nine fifths C plus 32. Okay, if we want to get C by itself, so we want to solve for C. Let's identify what's happening. It's being multiplied by 9 fifths and added by 32. Remember when we do our inverses, we always add or subtract first, so I'm going to subtract both sides by 32. F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C. If I'm multiplying by a fraction, the opposite would be to multiply by its reciprocal. So 5 over 9, 5 over 9 on both sides. I put this in parentheses so you would know I was multiplying each piece times 5 ninths. Over here, the 5's cancel and the 9's cancel. And C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. And now if I knew what degrees it was outside in Fahrenheit, like maybe today here at 65 degrees, I could plug that in for F and get out what it is in Celsius degrees. We have a couple more examples we want to look at. 
Number three, um, solve for m. if m minus n equals 5. If we want m by itself, we're going to look at what's happening to it. It's being subtracted by n. The opposite of subtract is add. So if I add n to both sides, my answer is m equals 5 plus n. And I can't combine 5 and n because they're not like terms. I have one more I want you to look at. Dealing with some fraction stuff, which I know is kind of tricky for some of you. Number four, we want, we're doing m divided by k equals x for k. Solving for k. Now, your book always says it like this, something for k or something for m or something for x. This is not part of the problem. This is what am I solving for. So once you figure out what variable, you can cover that up and just look at the equation. Okay. Once the word for happens, that's not part of the problem anymore. To get k by itself, I'm going to put the fraction over 1 because I want them to both be fractions. Then I'm going to cross multiply. k times x is kx. m times 1 is 1m or just m. Remember, I don't have to have the 1 in front. That, that's what that means when it doesn't have 1, that there is a 1 understood. If I want to get k by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by x. And k equals m over x. And that's our final answer. The assignment on this was assignment number 1, page 109, 3 to 13. If you have any questions, let me know.